Hey, hey, my name is Paul Lusens. Welcome to Sakura Angels, where Morning arrived. Let's see how the story goes on. Yeah, Morning arrived again. My head is killing me. Again. I read to bed earlier each night, but somehow I'm feeling more and more like garbage each time I wake up. I don't get it. The only difference is that the usual cheery rays of the morning sun are nowhere to, seen, to be seen. In their place is the heavy sound of rain hammering against the window. Pulling back the curtains today looks to be a gloomy day. Grey skies overhead cast a depressing shadow on the town below the torrential downpour showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. Great! And I have to go out in this weather at all. It's not going to be a fun day that much, I can already tell. I stretch and let out a draw. Oh, <clears throat> sorry, a drawn out yawn before I stagger towards the bathroom. Wait. My hand hovers over the handle as I just about to myself from carelessly swinging the door open. That was a close one. I need to approach the situation carefully. Too many mistakes have been made before. I've been lucky to escape with my life before, but they might not be so forgiving a second time. Okay, deep breaths. I can do this. I thumb the door I go several times with the back of my fist. Hello? Anyone is there? No response. But I've been fooled before. This proves nothing. I bang on the door again, even louder than the previous time. Nothing. Surely someone would have heard that if they were on the other side. Which means it might be safe. I bring the door open a crack. Just a little and peer through. So far's good. I can to open the door just a little more and a little more. Until I sit. A most wondrous sight takes my breath away. It's it's so beautiful. It's enough to move a man to tears. The bathroom is actually empty for once. No lucky misunderstanding, it's not called stairs. I can actually just really use the bathroom day without the threat of being torn apart. I waste no time sleeping inside and from looking the door. I even double triple check the lock something they should have been doing too but always forgot. After a peaceful shower I make my way down to the kitchen where Higar and Saik are waiting for me. <sighs> Gargo is out the window, a look of disgust across her face. With the laundry list of other things that annoy her, I guess it's no surprise she hates trying too. Kenta, do you still go to school? Ha ha ha! Just a mess, Jano. Don't get in a fight with me, eh? Hmm. 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 Uh, uh oh. <laughs> she tries her best to press a giggle but fails her laughter soon rocking the house. Conversely, he guards less than amused. <laughs> Flustered, he carries home a foot towards her mischievous partner. We haven't even reached school yet and they are already arguing. I think that's a new record. Ah, that's right. Continue, continue! You... You, you don't need to worry about me now. Rasik, I'm in the room. Hikari cuts herself short and clumps up. Ah, uh, I guess I'll never be able to hear about this old school of theirs. This magic one that told them all they know. Okay. No! Absolutely not! I don't need to. If it involves you stepping foot into the kitchen in any way, shape or form, I already know my answer. Nope. Uh -uh. No. Yeah, I'm not like her or Hikari anywhere near the kitchen again. If we do somehow manage to leave the kitchen standing, I'm sure whatever monster he may concoct would do more damage to me than any monster lurking out there. 
Psycha hips at the wrong side, pursues her lips in pout, and gives me a look that suggests I've been nothing but a massive disappointment to her. Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. It doesn't last long for, before her usual cheery expression takes over again. I think it must be important to really upset this girl. After that little dose of excitement for the morning, I quickly prepare a meal for the three of us before we set out into a town and brave the storm. The rain shows no signs of letting up. It's hard to believe that the weekend was as bright as and cheerful as it was when dark clouds have come to eclipse the sun overhead now. We had nothing but flimsy umbrellas to defend ourselves with that just barely hold under the immense downpour. I have my doubts if we'll even be able to make it to school dry. I'm not really sure how it got this bad all of a sudden. If it keeps up throughout the day, we might even have flooding to worry about. I feel a little silly for even having this crossed my mind, but I can't help but feel that this is maybe the land lamenting in some way. A sign of things to come. I don't know if I'm... I don't know I'm even thinking such nonsense, but if it won't leave my head no matter how hard I try. Looking back up at the skies, the clouds seem even more sinister than before. Hmm. We make it to school without drowning. Somehow. <sighs> As winter classroom Saka shakes herself dry, her hair is swishing wildly. Right beside Hikari. Ouch. She stops and blinks innocently, the last drops water splashing to the ground. I can't tell if she's just playing dumb here or if she really did it by accident. That's what makes her so scary sometimes. Hikari hops and stomps over to her seat, with class just about to start. I will suit and crumple into my seat with a sign. With sigh, yeah. With what a depressing day it's turning out to be. As the teacher shows up and class begins, I give one last look out the window, watering streaming so heavily down the glass I can just barely make out what's on the other side. The lesson goes on, for with each passing moment I find it more and more difficult to focus on the subject to at hand, the writing on the board blurring into a an incomprehensible mess. I can feel it, at the back of my skull, the familiar creeping pain. Why here? I've never had these headaches at school. They usually only crop up when something bad is about to happen. I guess it's not a full blown headache, so I shouldn't have anything to worry about now for now. Is it warning? That something's coming? I know what to make of it all. Kenta, I hear Psycho whisper from her seat behind me, a gentle hand on my shoulder. I look to my side and see Gary giving me an equally worried glance. They don't look that bad. Maybe the headaches are affecting me more than I think. And my head master up a faint smile. I can just believe in convince myself of him, but I'm fine, but it's enough to make them focus back on the lesson at hand. I have time arrives and I can just barely recollect what I was taught. What subject even was it? Eh, uh, that's not important right now. At least now I have the time to collect my thoughts and get a grip on the situation. Having hopped out of her seat, Saka skips to the front of my desk and peers down at me with a grin. I blink. It takes me a good second to register that anything has been said to me. Heh. Oh. You guys go ahead. I just had a bit of a headache. Saka offers a pretty look when I mention the headache. Hikari pops up out of nowhere and stifles Saka with hand to her mouth before she begins dragging her out of the class. Hikari's muffled cries of distress are the last thing I hear before the pair vanish into the corridor. Huh? Wait. Headaches? Doesn't mean she knows I've been having them frequently? And more than likely knows the cause of them? If they know anything that would enlighten me in this bizarre series of recent events, then I really have to chase them up on it. I can't let something as important as this be slip under the rug like everything else they try to keep from. I, I rise up from my desk with a little my legs not quite all there. They should be at the cafeteria, right? 
I'm sorry for recording to myself, but someone caught my eye amongst the ways of students going by. Silver hair, amber eyes, female student marches along with a blank expression. My head rings. Where have I seen her before? Wait, is she really? There's no doubt about it. She is the dark angel that has been making our lives a living hell. Yet, she seems like a completely different person right now. Gone is any trace of madness. All I see right now is an emotionless schoolgirl. You see? Her name falls out my mouth the moment I come to the realization. Has she always been in the school? How did I not notice something as obvious as this before? Our eyes look across the crowds. I fear something terrible is going to happen as dread sits in. But her gaze will be flickers away before she carries out on about her business. Huh? She was so intent on getting me before and now she wants nothing to do with me. Something isn't adding up here. I know it's a stupid and reckless thing to do, but I can't help but chase after her. If I go to get second Hikari, she might be gone by then. It's hard to keep up with her as the waves of students crash against me, everyone in frenzy to get their lunch, but I just about managed to catch a glimpse of her heading for the staircase. Yusuke, wait! She pays me no mind, they got used to ascend the stairs. Why am I following her? I don't know what I can possibly get out of this beyond an early demise. Yet I still insist on hiking up the stairs after her. She seems so different. Maybe I'm just secretly hoping that there is more to her than the initial crazed monster that confronted us two times before. Something that will help me make sense of this mess. I reach the top floor, breathless after climbing the stairs two steps at a time. I peer out in the corridor to try and see where she might have gone to, but there's nothing. I'm sure I wasn't that far behind for. So where did she appear to? I mean, this were the stairs and... Unless... Would she be out there? In this weather, I make for the circus again and go up a short flight of stairs leading to the rooftop. Yet the rain sounds more violent than ever outside. I can't possibly imagine someone willingly wanting to be out there. But I have to check just to be sure. I fight against the raging winds and heave the door open. Use the key. There she is, standing by the fencing, gazing out over the town with a hand idly gripping the mesh. Our drain has drenched her completely her soaked uniform clinging to her skin. She seems completely unbothered by it for, as if she doesn't feel the rain at all. I've only been out here for a second and I can already feel the urge to sneeze creep up as the chilling rain makes short work of me. Yuzuki ignores me, her eyes, amber eyes vacant. At the very least, she doesn't seem hostile at the moment. Right now, I think the rain has a more likely chance of killing me than she does. I tell to forward toward her, my foot splashing into a sizable puddle. She responds bluntly. I may as well be talking to a completely different person than the guy that went after my life. I think carefully before opening my mouth. While things are peaceful right now, it might take sink only one wrong thing to set her off. But I can't be too reserved. I want answers. After hesitating for a moment, my voice initially coming out in a croak, I finally confront her. I... Why are you so sad to kill me? Only killing me. I don't understand any of this, kind of. What I mean is... Why me? And so on. She turns up for a moment at the sound of my voice. I fear I might have said the wrong thing already, but she gradually relaxes again. What? Has she really been the same class as me? I'm sure I would have pieced together things a lot sooner if that were the case. Yusuke lets out a bitter laugh. I'm not sure I... Huh? I would have gripped titans on the veins, the wires sink into her flesh. What is she talking about? She looked at me and smiled and then 
人は傲慢で失礼で自分勝手だとあなたはこう考えるでしょうなぜ友達を作る努力をしないのかと I guess that thought did come to mind All I can do is stand and listen as she continues ignoring the urge to shiver 試してみなかったとでも思うの一生懸命話そうともしてみた社交的にねでもとっくにグループは出来上がっていて割って入れない壁が作られてしまっていた私の挨拶は無視され話しかければ白い目で見られた家に帰り暗闇の中で一人座りまた学校へ戻らなければならないことに耐えた人々がいる場所こそ私にとって一番孤独な場所だった友達が欲しかったわ何でもいいおしゃべりできる友達がねテレビ番組みたいにね So she's just lonely But why are you She cuts me off as she suddenly explains to meet me eye to eye The vacant Cersei is gone, Cersei is gone and it's place one of eight. Aim directly at me. Kyo waruku s h i n a i d e Mo, do de mo i kara. Ashita, subete ga kawaru. Eh? Tomorrow, as I ask her, a searing heat surges through my skull and forces the winds out of me. Yuzuki smirks, smirks at my pain. Kanjiru de shou. Kanojo wa mo sugu jiyu ni naru. 彼女の力は日々大きくなっている。What are you talking about? Who's going to be free? あら、聞いていないの<笑>面白いわ。どうして秘密にしているのかしら。まあいいわ。明日すべてが行われる。私はやっと、私が望むものを手に入れ。彼女は彼女が望むものを手に入れる。This could response me as I start to keep upright, the headache refusing to die down. Sayonara. Tsugi ni a no ga saigo yo. Wait, Yuzuki Watari! It's too late. She's gone. Is it wrong that she actually starts to be my favorite character? I'm left alone on the rooftop in the pouring rain. I'm to try to get to the bottom of things. But if anything, I think I'm even more confused now. Achoo! <laughs> okay, that was terrible. <laughs> okay, I should get back inside now. So, to the bone, I squelch into the classroom. I miss Yuzuki on the way down, and she doesn't appear to be here either. So, I have no idea where she might have vanished to. So, I've lost her, and now I'm probably going to succumb to pneumonia. Great! Oh, I guess I came to check up on me since I was taking too long to get to, to the cafeteria. I turned to meet her with a faint smile, my hair dripping wet. I, uh, if I tell her Yuzuki is here or that I went to confront her on my nose, she might work. We're in the sleep, so I'll keep it a secret for now. It's nothing, don't worry. I had to go out to get something, but. Was in too much of a rush to remember my umbrella. I'll be fine, really. And. Uh, sure! Okay, the sneeze isn't really doing me any favors. Uh, if you, she sees you. Oh, okay. True. I'm lucky it was Saka that found me first. I offer no resistance as Saka takes me by the wrist and guides me out of the classroom. She doesn't question me any further on the subject either of which I am thankful for. Almost dying in the rain aside, the rest of the school day goes by without much more happening. I catch no further sign of Yuzuki, for my headache lingers. I try to piece together everything Yuzuki had said. From what I can understand, she's doing this all because she wants friends. It does make sense. How did she end up the way she is to begin with? And who is this she Yuzuki kept referring to? 
someone that is someone that is somehow linked to my headaches and by extension I can only assume she's the cause of the monsters and everything else that has been going weird lately in my life. Yuzuki also implied the second he had no more than better letting on. Which I could tell already but not to this extent. I want to question them about all this. But I'm sure I'll be met with the same silence. Uh, why is everyone so damn secretive? I feel like I'm the only person in the world let out of the loop right now. I keep to my thoughts on the wet journey home and before long I find myself in my room gazing listlessly at the ceiling. The rain gradually dies down as the evening settles in. Things are fine and calm. But for how long? Yuzuki words are still repeating in my muddled mind. Something is going to happen tomorrow. Something bad. And I have no idea what. I glimpse out of my window. The usual tent is there, albeit a little more wet than usual. I felt sorry for them for having to come out during this sort of weather. Two two girls. They've got to know everything that I'm struggling to understand here. It's not fair that even for this entire situation supposedly revolves around me, I somehow know the least. I don't know if they are doing it to protect me or what, but I'm beginning to feel like it's too late for that. I continue to stare at that end. It's not that late. So they might still be awake. Okay. Yeah. I've decided. I'm going to go down there and demand they explain everything to me. I have to make a stand and be assertive. No more secrets. No more games. I'll refuse to leave them alone until they tell me all they need to know. I will leave them no chase. Probably. Seeing myself, I slip on my shoes and sneak out into the garden. Yep. This is happening. I'm finally going to learn everything. I approach the end in its entrance securely zipped. But that won't stop me. I know how these things work. I grab hold of the zip. No hesitating here. I'll give them no time to stop me. And then, in one swift motion, I slap the tent's door. Okay, no more secrets! I want answers and I want them! Eh? I may have made a mistake here. On the other hand, maybe not. Apparently past experiences have taught me nothing. <laughs> My jaw drops and I find myself unable to put together any form of life at the side before me. Upon opening the tent, I am greeted by the pair of them undressing in a space that looks far bigger on the inside than it does from the outside. Well then. I suppose... Okay, ex explain everything or I won't leave this place. That's how I would use this situation. A dizzying fragrance darts far from the tent and stirs my senses, rendering me more dazed than I already was before. My eyes are torn between the pair, unsure of where to settle as they feel flit between them. They're both are so... pleasing to eyes. <laughs> yeah, they are. While both of them are clear embers, Sayaka only seems surprised about the whole ordeal. But I can see Hikari proactively shaking with what I can only assume is rage. This. This isn't fair. How was I supposed to know? They do this stuff on purpose, I swear! Enta! Hikari barks strongly for something within their oddly spacious tent to cover herself with. Right, sorry, I was just. The right thing to do here would be to zip the tent back up and to wait for them to get dressed, but all I can do is gawk, possibly making the situation much worse than it should be. Curse my natural instincts. I can't help but look, that's what I'm programmed to do! Yeah, I guess so. Ah, god, I hope none of the neighbors can hear this. You got me all wrong, I just wanted to... She cuts me off. Naturally. Of course I was never going to be allowed to explain myself. That's just not how it works with these girls. With a blanket covering most of her bare body, Kari marches towards me with a scary expression, all the while Saka stands by. 
話を聞いてみたら理由もなく入ってこないんじゃないへえ理由があるのねエッチな理由が No, he can listen to her. I really do. She cracks her fist. Have mercy. Her fist flies, and I soon see stars as I'm left flat on my back and gazing sidewards, weaving my garden. I'm left sprawled out for a good moment before Second Hikari approached me, now fully dressed. Why does the ring have to be so difficult? After explaining how I met Yuzuki the other day and what she had told me, it seems I finally convinced them to explain things. I led them to my room so we could more comfortably explain things. That tent was an option, but I have bad memories of that place now. Saka plops down to my bed and excitedly looks about the room, while Hikari stands by the door, still angry about before. I said I was sorry. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Okay, so are you guys finally going to tell me what the heck is going on? Thank you. Saka reaches over and prods at my laptop. Guys, can we focus, please? Thank you. Saka sits up straight and takes on a serious impression. One that I wasn't even sure she was capable of. ところで、どうして今まで話してくれなかったわけ彼女と二人きりで会うなんてどれほど危険か分かってるの? No, it wasn't really dangerous. Hikari cuts in and stomps her way across to drink Saka, fire in her eyes. See, this is why I didn't tell her anything. I know, I know, it was stupid, babe, I guess. But it was the only way I could learn anything, since you guys weren't being very helpful. She falls silent. Guess I got her there. So, all I hear is, ah, no time is running short. But why? What exactly will happen to her? Which is? What for? Enough with the cryptic stuff. I am cold! I may have lost it a little there. I pull back from her and quiet down. I don't know, I'm some son of devil or something like that. Your ancestors, uh, uh, I don't really? Wait, why is this so important? あなたの血統が一番重要なのよ。だから面倒でもあなたを保護しているの。光、意地悪言っちゃダメ。けど、あなたの血筋のために私たちは送り込まれたんだ。もし悪者の手に渡ってしまったら、ゆずきのことなん
Why would I know something like this? It seems pretty important. Okay, so if a lot of people have this, magic plant would make mine so special. More special than theirs, anyway. Saka hops to her bed from the bed, taking me by surprise. This girl can't sit still for more than a minute, I swear. So she clears her throat as if this were a school presentation she had been practicing for. And he's your ancestor! Long story short! <laughs> okay. Yeah, pretty much I do. She frowns and that's other side. Okay, that's not what I actually thought, but I get it. I get the idea as well. Well, that happens sometimes too. This is getting pretty lengthy. And why do I feel like I know this person she's talking about? She leans forward and raises an eyebrow as I let out the out. Huh? Yeah, totally. I think. But what does this person have to do with me? つまり、ケンタはその闇の女王に立ち向かった人間にゆかりがあるのよ。ああ。光、なんで言っちゃうの？I appreciate it. Hmm. So, what? My ancestor killed this evil queen person? もしそうなら、今こんな話はしていないわ。彼女の力は強大で倒すことは不可能だった。彼女は不滅とまでは言わないにしても、それに近い存在だった。彼は彼にできる限りの力で彼女を封印したの。その人の血が。あなたに流れてるってわけ。うん。彼は彼の運命と封印を結びつけた。封印はとても強くて解くためにはある条件を満たさなきゃならない。エンタです。What my blood, right? Sekai。彼女を封印した地下。その子孫の血でのみ封印は解かれます。ま、実際には子孫ならダルデモってわけじゃなくて潜在魔力値が大きい人だけなんだけど。え、そうだ Hey, that's pretty convenient. Saga so serves and lets out the tiny out. It must have been exhausting for her to focus on one subject for so long, but I think things are finally starting to make sense. <sighs> uh. 
Yeah, I do. I do, but you sleep to be falling asleep. Yeah, I think. Basically, my blood is the key to unlocking something terrible. Uh, but then, if it's connected to my blood, why are we running out of time? そして少しずつ彼女の影響が世界に忍び寄っているわ。ケンタ。レシー。そう、she's彼女私たちの仕事はもっと大変になるってわけ。うう。That's。That's uh -oh. But I can't kind of hit one and they know about it. でも、あなたがシャドウを見てしまってから、事態は悪くなるばかりで、私たちも驚いちゃって、あれだけ厳重な私たちの監視をかいくぐるなんて。思い当たることはあなたがサンドイッチを食べるって言い張らなければ違うもん注意して見てたってば uh, I guess I was even luckier than I thought that they had managed to save me back then とにかく私たちはあなたの前に姿を現せざるを得なくなってよくないって分かってたけど Well, excuse me for existing. Well,excuse Saka pulls a complicated expression. I don't think I'm going to like what she has to say next. Easy, let's go. Me? How the heck am I supposed to help? You guys are the ones with all the fancy powers. あなたに頼ることが最善策じゃないことは分かってるわ。だけど他に選択の余地はない。他の手段を探す時間もない。あなたに流れている血で封印されているから、あなたの血でその力を強くすることができるの。技術的には一度封印を解いてから。Can't we get one seal on another seal? Basically seal trapped in a seal? I mean, she will break one, but not the second friend. Something like that. So in other words, I'm really the only solution here. I'm not sure how to take this. I know the first thing about the magic business, though. Am I even capable of doing such thing? Saka takes a moment to ponder things, a finger held to her chin as her eyes run over me. Hikari ga, shokushu no shadow to asonde ta yoru o oboe teru? 
な遊んでないったら I guess so. But what does that have to do with anything? 光の剣を使ったよね。Yeah, but I don't. あんなに大きな剣なのに、とっても軽いって思わなかった、えー、あの剣はね、迅速かつ強力な攻撃ができるように、使い手とつながる魔法が施されてるの。実際には、魔法を制御できない人が使おうとした場合、その。感じ魔法の力が大きすぎるんだよねブームまあ爆発まではいかないかもだけどでもあんまり綺麗な最後にはならないかなあの剣を使って立ってられたってことは健太には潜在能力があると言っていいと思うイエイクス I can't believe there was the possibility of exploding or picking up her sword. What I did back then was even more c l a s s than I realized. Ano Ken got s k y t a n a r a Fui Maho mo dai job da yo. Demo so no tame niwa. Fui in sarete ilu basho ma de ika na ke ike na i ってことよ Ka no jo ga saga ste ilu mono o motte ne. Mu bo すぎるわ Hi tots demo ma ti gai leba. Se kai ga kike ni sara sare ru na yo. No pressure then, huh? I try my best to keep things light hearted and force out an awkward laugh, but it's difficult after hearing all of this. To think that somehow I'm both the key to unlocking this woman from the prison and the only thing that can put her away for good. Why are you smirking about that? Eh. <laughs> I wonder if out saving the world is a valid enough excuse to miss a day of school. Anata ga watash tachi o taske te kure ru naru ne. Taske te kure nai nara. Hoka no hoho o sagas kara. But there isn't another way, is there? There is the whole reason you're telling me all this, right? I heave out a sign and give my guardians a look over. They've done so much for me in this past week. And even more than I lies behind the scenes. If anything I owe them is this, I swallow hard. I can feel my hands begin to tremble. I might die if I go with them, but then if we leave it, things will only get worse. So, I guess I have no choice here, do I? I will help with the sealing business. You think I can manage it? Saika looks ecstatic as she clamps her hands together. Was she not expect me to help? You can't look so quite surprised. Jeez, a little faith goes a long way, guys, girls. It's the least I can do after you guys keep been risking your lives for me every day, kind of. If I finally have a way to go, then I'm not going to waste the chance. Kenta. Sai! Kuni ka kuiyo! Kenta goroku wo tsukura na kutcha! Almost. Thanks. Ah, demo, sore wa ato da ne. Yami no jo wo fuin suru ni wa. たくさんやることがあるからちゃんと聞いてね。And just when I thought the night couldn't get longer, yet another lecture begins. I'm sure it wasn't easy for the pair of them to teach someone like me the basic of magic, someone who only just barely was aware of its existence at all. I'm not even sure if I've got the steps down. But after hours practicing, they assured me I've got it down. I won't be able to tell for sure until the real thing. That's what scares me. What if they misjudge what I'm really capable of? Or I mess up? Or there's a whole range of possibilities of things messing up on the day. These are the thoughts that stay with me long after the girls return to their tent to catch whatever rest they can get before the morning. Last thoughts I have before I finally drift off to sleep is that the toughest day of my life is now lying ahead of me. And that, that moment will be in the next. Episode, I guess. For now. For now, hope you enjoyed it and. And basically, see you tomorrow! That's where we will continue, Sakura Angels! Yeah! See you then! Bye bye!